Hey guys, today, hey guys, today I'm going to talk about how I use WinWiki with Task Warrior to manage all my note taking and to do list needs. Um, so, as you can see, I'm working on a fresh install of Manjaro. I have installed Task Warrior, I have installed the new Vim Nightly, and I've installed a few Python libraries that are needed for the Task Wiki integration, which we'll get into in a bit. Um, so, if I just run Task, you'll see that uh, it's just an empty task warrior instance and if I run new of him you can see that I'm on 0.50 dash whatever that uh, the nightly instance currently tagged nightly instance so what does my config file look like at this moment I'm working on a very bare bones neo vim config um, this does work the same on vim as well um, by the way on regular vim as well I just prefer neo vim um, for plugins, we use VimWiki, obviously, which I'll get into as the first thing after this. Um, then TaskWiki, I'll talk about the integration with TaskWarrior and how we can manage to-dos across our VimWiki. And then something for just easier markdown usage. Um, we set some configuration options here. We set the location of our VimWiki folder. Um, I usually have this in a Dropbox instance, but for now, I've put it in a temporary folder. Um, to test out things. Um, you set the extension to be Markdown because I prefer Markdown and we'll see how it's really useful to use Markdown because you don't actually have to convert it to HTML or something like that later on when we see how we can just if I just want to read through my Vim wiki what do I do? Um, this is important because it makes uh, the text links as .md instead of just text even though WinWiki can follow these these types of links, but uh, it's nice for other Markdown editors to be also be able to follow our WinWiki links. So this is a really useful plug this is a really useful command, um, and that's basically it. Okay, let's start with WinWiki. You can launch NeoVim, and then you can get into WinWiki by pressing leader www. In my case, it's backslash www, and this will open an index.md file. Um, at the VimWiki location. And right now, this is just a basic markdown file. You can do headings, you can do list one, you can do unordered lists, you can do ordered lists, one, two, um, and, and a bunch of other markdown stuff. You can read through the full VimWiki documentation um, at, the, at the GitHub VimWiki page, and they mention a bunch of different stuff so that VimWiki supports. And that's great. How I really like to use VimWiki is by putting links at the very top. So at the very top, I'll have something like work, I'll have something like home, I'll have something like, I don't know, dev for personal development stuff. Um, and let me get rid of these. And then in each of these, I create links for them, and you can create a link by pressing enter, and then you can have your work stuff here. So in your work stuff, I'll have like project one, maybe project two, and then the project one inside this, and then maybe project two inside this. And then for home stuff, maybe I'll have something for bills, and then bills inside this. Um, and one thing I, I really sometimes prefer is to have a nested folder structure as well, like right now, um, if you if I take a look at the folders here, I see that all of these files that, are, that have been created are inside the same folder. So you can easily do that by manually constructing the link. I can say dev is going to be in dev slash index.md. Um, and this Vimic will ask me, should it make a new directory? And I'll say yes. And that will be a new directory. And this will be like the index file inside this new directory. And then inside dev, I might have something like uh, game dev. And this will have its own thing. And this this folder structure and this navigation through WimWiki structure through a wiki structure is really really crucial to um, using WimWiki well. Basically, this evolves over time as you put as you get more and more information. You create more links, and this becomes your knowledge base. And this becomes the place where you put literally everything. Um, if I'm writing a book, uh, I will create a writing section, and I will maybe create a uh, maybe a fantasy section, and maybe I will 
write a book inside and maybe I'll start writing typing up my chapters inside this so like you can literally create and expand this to include every single thing that you want to take notes about but sometimes you you don't want to really worry about where to put things right like if you're in a meeting right now and you want to take notes immediately WinWiki has this functionality called the diary functionality and you can start using the diary functionality by pressing leader w leader w so in my case it's backslash w backslash w and what this will do is this will create a a diary entry for that current day so i'll say hey i have a meeting with x to the meeting with x and then i'll start taking notes um, i'll say x was pretty cool he introduced me to a new thing and you know however diary stuff works um, and I can go back to my um, index file I can go back to my home page and now if I want to see all my diary entries I can do this leader W leader I to open the diary index page so nope, nope I can do leader W I sorry to open the diary index page and once I'm in the index page I can do leader W leader I to generate the links and this will generate all my diary links and you can see the date you can see the date itself and the uh, the title basically that I assigned to that diary entry and that's cool and you know I can go back if I do leader w leader w again it'll just take me to the current day's diary entry and I can maybe do more stuff here maybe I can say okay I had a meeting today nope well what did I do uh, I can say I had a meeting with x today and then I also worked on project y and maybe it was fun and I can give the top level heading being meeting with X and work on Y right and now if I go to my diary page again I can regenerate this and it'll update the titles for the diary pages okay I think the idea here is that eventually you want to you want to put down jot down some stuff but eventually you want to put move these things into um, a structured place right so uh, I worked on project Y and it was fun and maybe I want to store that somewhere so let's split it up and let's go into work and oops I don't actually have a page for project Y so let's create a project Y page and maybe I will just take it out of the diary because if it's if it's crucial enough to be stored for some important thing like uh, into my knowledge base then I don't want to have to navigate through my diary entries just to figure out that project Y was fun right uh, well actually the fun thing is more subjective but let's say it was something different let's say project Y was broken because XYZ and I had to use this code to fix it right and I can put some code here like uh, see. hello world right okay cool so I have I've moved this out of my diary and I moved this into the project directory right um, okay so if I go back to my home directory now you can see how you can sort of start to see how VimWiki is used in my day-to-day -day note taking right so now if I want to know anything about project Y it's gonna be here inside the project Y folder okay but do I want to launch Vim every time I want to read through my Vim wiki entry? Um, here's where this thing called MDWiki comes in, which is really useful. Vim wiki by default provides an ability for you to generate HTML files from your Vim wiki pages, right? But you don't want to have to constantly regenerate those files. If you're on your, the same, if you have the Markdown files, you can actually let the browser auto convert them to HTML, um, and that's how MDWiki does it. So to get MDWiki, you can navigate to the MDWiki GitHub page, and even though it hasn't been updated in the past six years, we can just download the latest release, um, the zip file here, and you'll see that the zip file contains a few different files here. We're just going to focus on the MDWiki.html file, and all you have to do is copy this file over into your WinWiki folder. So I can do cp mdwiki uh, index oh yes mdwiki.html into uh, my winwiki folder and that's it. Now, 
And once you have it in your WinWiki folder, you can open up open up the WinWiki folder in your favorite file manager, and you can double click on the mdwiki.html file, and it shows an empty page. And this is going to be the default behavior on both Firefox and Chrome. And the reason for this is that they currently do not have access to open other files around your HTML file, right? So you need to allow local file access in order to um, allow WinWiki to be able to properly display your WinWiki, uh, MDWiki to be pop able to properly display your WinWiki. And on Firefox, this can be done by simply opening up your preferences and you have to search for this preference called um, unique file origin. So privacy.file underscore unique underscore origin. And the default value for this is going to be true. You're going to flip this to false. And once you close it and refresh, you'll see that now WinWiki is showing some stuff here, So which is great. So you can see our stuff here. I can see project Y, and it renders it really nicely. Um, now, let's see if we can make this a little bit nicer now. So we open up New Vim again, and let's maybe add a heading here. This is my my wiki. And you see that I don't have to actually regenerate anything because it is actually directly reading from the Markdown file and translating it client side. Okay, this is somewhat nicer, and MD Wiki actually allows you to specify basically like a header file so this entire page is generated from the wiki so you can end up um, and you can read through their documentation but you can end up basically with like uh, tabs on the top and basically a table of contents and stuff like that so it's it's really great and really useful and in my case let's say i also want to expose my diary entries although probably not a good idea but i do want to expose my diary entries um, and diary entries exist in diary slash diary dot md. Right. And now if I refresh this and I click on diary, you can see that it's already created, right? So it goes to my diary index page, which contains my diary stuff, which is pretty cool. All right. Now the stuff that we've been waiting for, how do we integrate it with our task manager for to do stuff? Um, so basically, WinWiki by default has an ability to create um, to-do items, which is if you create a this is a, a to-do item, and if I just hit Control Ent no Control Space yes sorry if I hit Control Space this will actually create it as a to. If I hit Control Space on it again, it will mark it done, and this lets me toggle between done and not done and I can have it, this is, I can even have it be nesting to-do item. So um, a parent task and I can do this and it'll actually automatically indent if he sees the, if it sees the column, columns, uh, columns. Um, and I can have child task one and I can have child task two. And let's say I get done with child task two. It, this is a symbol that shows it's partially done. So, and if I, complete the child task one as well, it will actually automatically mark the parent task as done as well. So this is a default to-do system that exists inside WinWiki. But the problem here is you're going to have this massive knowledge base and maybe um, maybe it's okay for you, if, if this is sufficient for you that all your work stuff is in one place and then maybe you want to have a single, like in your work you maybe want to have your own to-do maybe a to-do page here, right? So you put your work to-dos here, and maybe in your home you put your to-dos here. And that, that seems to work for some people. But you can actually, with TaskWiki integration, you can actually make it a lot more extensive. Now, I think I will cut this video off here, but um, we know how WinWiki works, we know how to use it, we know how to do basic task stuff in WinWiki. Um, I think I'm gonna focus on, in the next video, I'm gonna focus on how it works with task warrior and in in addition to that how i want to how i can use it across all my platforms because i want to make it completely comprehensive like if i'm on the go and i have my cell phone with me how do i introduce a task to it and if i'm on uh, if i'm on my computer if i'm on my laptop if i'm on my tablet i want to showcase like how the system can work across all my devices
So watch out for that video. Thank you for watching.